What's up guys, Jake Wisely here from the Full-Time Filmmaker team, and today I'm gonna to go over six quick tips to improve your drone footage to make it look like this. All that footage you just saw was from the Mavic 2 Pro using the six tips we're about to teach you. The Mavic 2 Pro is personally my favorite drone at the moment for the types of videos I shoot. I've shot with the Inspire and the Phantom 4 Pro and our team has used the Mavic Air and the DJI Spark. And we even recently tested out the brand new Mavic Air 2, but we still choose and would recommend the Mavic 2 Pro for professional video quality over the Air 2 because the Air 2 has a smaller sensor size, giving you more compressed, lower quality videos with worse low light performance. It also has a fixed aperture, which doesn't give you any manual control, and it's smaller, so it's more susceptible to strong winds. So even though it does have perks over the 2 Pro, like being a better photo camera and being cheaper and lighter, we still think that the Mavic 2 Pro is currently the best drone on the market for quality video at a reasonable price. They are different drones for different markets. The Air 2 is half the price because it's catered towards hobbyists and consumers, whereas the Mavic 2 Pro has more pro features, so it's catered more towards prosumers and pros. But after using all these different types of drones, the Mavic 2 Pro, to me, is the best all-around drone that does everything I need. And the main reason for that is it can shoot 4K in D-Log at up to 30 frames per second. And it's super easy to transport around, much easier than the Inspire 2 and the Phantom 4. We've been using this drone as a team for over a year now, and we have loved the results. And if you know how to use it properly, and know the settings that will optimize its performance, your footage can have your viewers wondering if it was shot on a higher-end drone like the Inspire 2. But moving on to our six tips to achieving cinematic drone footage. Our first tip is to shoot in D-Log. D-Log isn't available in every drone, but when shooting on the Mavic 2 Pro, it's definitely a must. Utilizing D-Log allows this drone to have 14 stops of dynamic range along with 10-bit color. This definitely comes in handy when you're wanting to match the colors of your DSLR footage with your aerial footage and you're needing lots of flexibility in the editing room. This allows you to retain detail in both your highlights and shadows shadows and saves you from over or under exposing your image in tricky lighting situations. Tip number two is aperture. Typically with wide shots, you want a higher aperture so that your landscape is completely in focus. However, after running our own test on the Mavic 2, we realize that at f5.6 and higher, the image gets increasingly soft and lines begin to soften. The Mavic 2 Pro's sharpest aperture is at f4, with anything between f4 and f2.8 also being very sharp. Tip number three is using ND filters. This tip goes hand in hand with using the right shutter speed. For those who don't know, your shutter speed affects your motion blur. And if you have your shutter speed cranked too high, you'll see what appears to be skipping frames in your movements. So you always want your shutter speed to be double your frame rate, especially when shooting aerials. However, you also want a low ISO. The higher ISO, the more noise you'll see in your image. So the lower, the better. So the problem is with a low ISO and a shutter speed of 1 60th and an aperture of f4, your image will probably probably be way overexposed if you're shooting during the middle of the day. So you either have to raise the aperture, which will lower your drone's image quality, or raise the shutter speed, which also will make your footage look like garbage. Both of those options are terribly wrong and I would never use them. The right option, and our tip number three, is to invest in ND filters. ND filters, aka neutral density filters, reduce the amount of light coming into the camera. This allows you to keep your shutter speed at twice your frame rate, an aperture of f4, and a low ISO in order to produce the sharpest image possible. The ones we love and use are from Polar Pro, and the link to buy those are in the description below. Tip number four is frame rate. One con to using the Mavic 2 Pro is its inability to shoot 4K at 60 frames per second like the Phantom 4 and Inspire can do. However, using the Phantom at 60 frames per second many times, I usually would end up speeding up the footage in post anyway. Since drone footage is usually pretty far away from any subject, most movements look too slow. So I personally never really use 60 frames per second because for me it was just way too slow. I would film at 24 frames per second at 4K, but this didn't look very good to me because there were still some micro jitters that happened with real-time footage. So then I switched to shooting at 30 frames per second, which was perfect. 
30 frames per second is the best setting to use when you're wanting to smooth out your parallaxes and movements just a little bit more and achieve that dreamy buttery movement. However, if you are filming things that need to take place in real time, you want to stick with 24 frames per second. So like everything, every frame rate has a time and has a place. But for most of the things we shoot, and if you're wanting to know what frame rate we think is best for drone footage, we say that it's 30 frames per second. Tip number five is achieving smooth movements. Like shooting with a DSLR, it doesn't matter how good your settings are. If you're not trying to create a smooth, beautiful shot, it'll look like garbage. We won't go into all the different types of movements that you can achieve with a drone. We'll do that in a later video, but we will go over the settings we have found to be best when wanting to achieve smooth, buttery movements. First, you'll want to go into the drone's gimbal advanced settings, and for the Mavic 2 Pro, we've put our max gimbal pitch speed at 15 and our gimbal pitch smoothness at 20. This just allows for your movements to ramp in and out of the movement rather than stop on a dime and cause disruption to a smooth movement. You can test it out on your drone to see what speed and smoothness works best for you. But for the Mavic 2 Pro, speed at 15 and smoothness at 20 is best. However, even with these settings, achieving good drone movements is all about being gentle with the joysticks. If you're jerking your fingers around and not easing into every movement, odds are your footage won't look very good. As for the actual movements, it takes some getting used to. The good thing about aerial photography is no matter where you point the camera, you're probably going to get a beautiful shot. The fact that you're in the sky giving an entirely new perspective to a scene already wows your viewers. So now your job is to just create a movement to dynamically bring that scene to life. The most cinematic movements are the ones that help the viewer feel as if they're in a helicopter flying over what you're showing them. The worst move I see videographers make is when they just have the drone hover in the air and they pan the camera left and right. This causes way too much motion blur to really be wowed by the scene and you don't feel like you're naturally flying over anymore. You feel like you're watching security footage from the sky. So whatever movements you do, keep them slow, dynamic, and natural. And our sixth and final tip is to create great composition. With aerials, you want to follow the rule of thirds, which essentially is splitting your screen into three pieces and keeping the horizon on one of those two thirds. Having your horizon on the top third if you're wanting to focus your viewer's attention on the ground and having the horizon on the bottom third if you're wanting to focus on the sky. You can also put the horizon dead center to focus on perfect symmetry, which also is beautiful. Along with following the rule of thirds, good composition means filling the frame. A common mistake we see with videographers is they get so excited about the fact that they have a drone and they don't take the time to make sure that their viewers know what the main subject is. If you're wanting your audience to focus in on a building, a structure, and whatever, make sure that it is the dominant subject in your video and that it's filling the frame or front and center in the frame or positioned on one of the thirds. If your subject is hiding behind something or so far away that it's not even clear if it's the main subject, then change your composition and or get closer. Great composition can make or break every shot. So to review our six tips to shooting cinematic drone footage are shoot in D-Log, use a f4 or 2.8 aperture, invest in good ND filters to allow your shutter speed to stay double your frame rate, which should be at 30 frames per second in most cases, and practice using your joysticks and smooth settings to achieve smooth and buttery dynamic movements with beautiful composition. Drone cinematography is like anything in this profession. It takes time, practice, and learning from your failures but we hope that these six tips can shorten your learning curve, remove some of your failures, and help you become better at aerial cinematography. Inside our online course, Full-Time Filmmaker, we dive into how to edit and color grade this footage to make it as cinematic as possible. Because even a gorgeous shot like this one has the potential to be a thousand times better with a serious, good color grade. So click the link below to join our online course where you can see an in-depth breakdown of how we achieved the shots we did and how we colored them. But that's it for today. Hey guys, for those of you who don't know, yes, we offer a paid online course that we'd love to see you be a part of, but we also offer a free one hour webinar where you can learn our top 10 secrets to achieving cinematic shots, along with a free preview of what our paid course is all about. So if you have questions or doubts about our online course, the free one hour webinar is a great place to start. But that's it for today, guys. Make sure you subscribe, and if you have any further questions, please let us know.